I wanted to talk a bit about sort of the, the core of the work that we're doing at the moment in, in our trade and climate, which is around corporate courts and climate. Um, uh, a bit about sort of what the issue is, why, why, why we're doing it, and then maybe you'd say a bit at the end about some of the recent things that we, we've done. So um, I, I'm, I'm thinking some of you probably know that we've been working on corporate courts or formerly Investor State Dispute Settlement, ISDS, for quite a while. Um, it's, it, 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 these are, it's, it's um, something that gets written into trade and investment deals, um, so written into the rules that, set and the, uh, that allow corporations to sue governments outside of um, the, the national legal system. It's, um, it's a privileged legal system, only accessible to foreign corporations, effectively sort of, sort of the largest and powerful, most powerful corporations that can afford to use it. Um, it, it just in its very nature, it's an unjust um, uh, system that, that exists to protect the interests of, of the, the richest and most powerful, which is why we work on it. Um, but, you know, I say that and it all sounds <laughs> well, you may have switched off at the moment that I said trade, although probably not if you're an economist, um, <laughs> but it all sounds quite dry. So rather to talk about it is sort of in terms of stories and cases and, and also how we've come to um, the current focus around uh, climate and fossil fuel um, in, in particular. So when we've been working on this previously, I would probably start talking about um, sort of a range of cases, uh, healthcare, tobacco company sues a government over plain packaging on cigarettes, public services, um, water company sues over a cap on consumer water prices during a financial crisis, and, you know, cover, cover a range of issues. And amongst those, one of which would have been climate related, a company called Lone Pine, um, which is suing the uh, Canadian government over a fracking moratorium in Quebec. Um, and I, I talk about it partly, well, partly because, you know, it illustrates climate amongst the other things, but also it was a nice example of the way in which corporate courts can be used to fight back against a community success. So um, the, uh, since um, the, the St. Lawrence River Basin, which is mainly in Quebec in Canada, was opened up for fracking exploration, um, and, but over a decade or so, there had been community um, protest um, and, and concern around it, building sort of starting with sort of petitions and more local things, this all connecting together. At one point, they did a walk all the way down the St. Lawrence River doing sort of events at all of the places that they stopped in and um, ending with sort of a big demonstration in Montreal. And at one point, there was a survey that said sort of about 80 percent of the population of Quebec was opposed to fracking in, in the region. And, um, and, and as a result of all of this public pressure, the Quebec government um, says uh, that, uh, okay, we will introduce a review. We will look into it. That review takes two years, in the, it, but it reports back and it says, yes, you know, the, some of the, these concerns are valid. We recommend that you, sh you know, the problem needs to be more investigation, but in the meantime, there should be a moratorium. The Quebec government says, okay, we will introduce a moratorium. And in response, this, they get slapped with this corporate court case um, from, from the fracking firm. Um, and then I know there's, there's another case um, uh, sort of coming up that's also related to uh, climate. Um, a UK company this time, or at least it's UK registered, it's a bit of a letterbox registration company called Rock Hopper. Um, it's registered in Salisbury, actually. Um, uh, and it well, wants to drill for oil off the coast of Italy. Again, there are a lot of public protests. Um, partly it's an area that depends on tourism and having a big oil rig in, in view off the coast of the coast is not the best thing for your tourism industry. But it's also, it's an environmentally sensitive region and also just the concerns about increasing, you know, more oil drilling at, at, at this time. And again, as a result, the Italian government introduces a ban on offshore oil drilling within 12 nautical miles of the coast, and they get hit by this case from Rockhopper. And it, it's interesting, it's one of these examples where, so Rockhopper were not suing just to recover what they'd invested. They'd invested 
There were a couple of different estimates, but about 40 to 50 million. That's not what they were suing for. They were asking for what they estimated was the total value of all of the oil in the field if there was as much as they thought it was, if they had extracted all of it, if the oil price had never dropped, if nothing had ever gone wrong. They reckoned that they could have made uh, around 300 million from that oil field. So that's what they're suing for. Um, so th this is part of the nature. It, it, you, it's part of the reason actually that companies use corporate courts also is that you can sue for much higher amounts based upon these vague estimations of future profits. Um, and then there's another um, couple, two cases sort of connected um, that come along that are also connected to climate. Um, and again, it's a very similar story in, in the Netherlands, um, uh, as, as here, as all around the world, climate campaigners have been campaigning for, for decades, struggling to push for the climate action that we need to be taking getting a few small steps forward, things going back again, feeling they're not getting anywhere. Um, year 2015, that's the year um, the Dutch government is signing up to um, the, the Paris Climate Treaty, the commitments there, but it's also the year when a company called RWE opens a new coal power station in, in the Netherlands that the government has commissioned. Um, and the following year, another company called Uniper also opens one. And, um, <laughs> the, the, the climate activists are just, um, you know, feeling like they're not getting anywhere. So actually, they sue in the national courts, um, a group, uh, an alliance of civil society organizations comes together um, called Agenda and brings a case to say that the government is not living up to its climate commitments. If, if it's to actually live up to the commitments that it just signed up to, um, then it needs to do more. Um, and that case goes through the national courts, goes to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court agrees. It says, yes, if you are to live up to your commitments for future generations, what you're doing at the minute is not enough. And that, and there have also, you know, there have been protests, there have been demonstrations, they had an annual sort of climate festival. Um, and, and, you know, as a result of all of this pressure, the Dutch government introduces a, um, uh, a coal phase out. Um, law. They say that it will phase out coal power by 2030. So um, these coal power, uh, power stations will be closed down. And as soon as they start mentioning it, RWE and UNIPA very publicly start threatening to bring a corporate court case. Um, and sometimes these cases can be very secretive. Um, you, you, you know, sometimes we don't even know that some of them are happening um, until, uh, uh, you know, the, the cases are over. When companies sort of shout about it in this way, I think they're aiming at a chilling effect, which is quite well documented around some of these, these cases. So that tobacco case that I mentioned at the start, Philip Morris sued Australia um, over plain packaging on cigarettes. And Australia wasn't the only country doing that at the time. Several other countries also had plans. When this case came along, um, all those countries put their plans on hold. They didn't, you know, they didn't, they were just like, I'm sorry, the, you know, the review is, the white paper is taking a little bit longer to get together than we thought it was. You know, we, we, we have some other priorities, but, but one way or another, and we're not quite doing anything about it until we see what happens with this case. Um, and Philip Morris lost that case on a technicality rather than on, on the main substance. Once it lost the case, all those countries went ahead. But there had been a several years delay in between while they waited to see what happened. Um, and that, you know, we've already delayed so long on climate action, we can't afford more delay. But what's actually more worrying is that I just read some research um, a few months ago that said, um, while that chilling effect lasted for the length of the case in rich countries, in countries in the global south, that chilling effect lasts much more longer and to some degree is still going on because those countries know themselves to be much more at risk. They, could, they cannot afford the millions that it takes just to fight the case, let alone the risk that they might lose and be slapped with one of these massive fines. Um, and so it's just, again, this, the chilling, the, the risk that, the, 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 the cases from RWE are not just aimed at the Netherlands, they're aimed at countries all across the world who might be um, thinking of taking such actions and who might go, maybe we'll just put that on the shelf.
with these sort of cases all coming, I realized that that pattern that you see in all of them, where there is, there is democratic protest that over time eventually leads to a change and a success, and then the corporate courts are used to, to push back against it. This is what's actually playing out in a, in a bigger picture as well, that, that over time, governments have been pushed slowly, dragging their feet in far too many cases into taking the climate action that the planet needs. And it's corporate courts that fossil fuel companies are increasingly turning to, to protect the status quo and their interests. Um, and therefore, so that we, we have been, because I, I we, we fear that we will see more and more of these cases. And, and, and we, have, we have done this. Um, another UK company, uh, Accent Resources, is suing Slovenia um, over a fracking case. Uh, and just over the summer, um, quite a high profile one, um, the owner of the Keystone tar sands oil pipeline um, it, going from Canada to the US. Um, uh, it was one of Biden's sort of symbolic things that he did on his first day in office was to cancel the permit for the Keystone pipeline, saying that it was not compatible with sustainability goals. Um, and in the summer, quite anticipated, the, the owner um, has slapped down a case um, uh, to, uh, to, to, to sue, sue the US government. We believe that corporate courts are unjust anyway, um, but also that they're going to be increasingly used in this way to undermine, to slow down, or at the very least, for all these fossil fuel companies to make yet more money. They've been making money for all of these years even when the science has been saying that we should be leaving the fossil fuel in the ground and they've been being able to keep making money and now they want more money in order to stop. Um, I, uh, we, we, one of the things that we have done uh, is we, we managed to get um, a, uh, a, we, a story, a sort of quite a large sort of media story. It was picked up by Sky News. The story around these cases, and the fact that um, between five companies, fossil fuel companies, are asking for over eighteen billion from governments, um, and it got a fair amount of debate. And one of the people on the Sky program commenting on it, he put it. He he was like, um, it, 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 it's like the the we're addicted to fossil fuels. Uh, and now our pusher is is trying to, um, to to charge us again when we're finally trying to kick the addiction, um, and they, they they they're wanting yet more money. Um, so yeah, I mean that's 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 what the case is about. That's what we the, the campaign is around. That's what what we are focusing on. Um, I mean we we're we're focusing on um, corporate courts in the UK's new trade deals but also um, in particular um, a deal called the Energy Charter Treaty, um, which is uh, a deal just for energy investments, but it's involving around um, over 50 countries. Um, and it's the one that's being most used by all of these fossil fuel companies. It's about 25 years old. There's a big campaign um, all across Europe, calling on governments all across Europe to exit that treaty, saying this is a dinosaur treaty. I mean, we probably shouldn't have had it in the first place, but certainly we should not have it now. Um, calling on governments or if, 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 you know, we can persuade 20, 30 governments to all leave at the same time, the whole treaty would probably collapse. Um, the UK, unfortunately, <laughs> is not one of the, the governments that is, 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 is really um, looking at that option, but we're trying to build the pressure around that um, and trying to see whether that's something that we can make happen. So that's been our focus over the, um, the last, the last few and a few months, and it will be up until um, the run up to COP. This call, the exit, exit the ECT before COP. I know that's far too many acronyms altogether. But <laughs> we 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 went and had a fun stunt in um, in the city of London outside the law firms who are acting for um, three of the the fossil fuel cases um, uh, because those the specialist law firms involved in corporate courts. They really quite promote, they're not neutral in this. They promote the continued existence of corporate courts. They 
to some degree, you know, it's a multi-million dollar industry for them. They have an interest in keeping it going. They they send out these bulletins to companies sort of uh, alerting them. There's a law reform here. Here are the treaties that you could sue under if you happen to be affected by this. This, you know, they 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 are actively keeping the system going. Um, so we, we we went along with um, some circus performers on stilts. There's an oil baron and a lawyer, and and, um, uh, and, and Sandra was there uh, helping to wave fabric to represent climate change and rising sea levels and floods. Um, um, uh, and uh, and then we had from our, many of our local groups had actions up and down the country. Um, outside some of the um, some of the, the the fossil fuel companies involved, or just in in, um, in 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 suitable places to to catch people and talk to them about it. So um, yeah, that that's really helped to sort of build some momentum around this, and it, and it's something that we will be taking forward in our um, in our mobilisation going towards COP um, and and our engagement at COP. Um, so we will you know we will be there in the in the protests with some of the banners around this, we have a couple of sessions um, 